Okay, work girl. Struggling with this one because I do not feel that this even flatters her. What do these two have to do with each other? And I am here on YouTube talking to y'all. Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not recognize me, my name is Neon Noir, and despite not being in drag today, I am the brightest fan in the box. Y'all, I apologize for not being in drag today. The reason for this is I got a plane to catch in just a few hours. I need to get this video out quick. And not only do I have one episode, but I have two episodes to film. That is right, because two episodes of Drag Race aired on one night. That means we got double the dosage, double the fun, and also double the videos. So without further ado, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars 9, Episode 1, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know which looks are the fabs and drabs of the week. So in this video, we are gonna be focusing on episode one, but make sure to stay tuned till tomorrow or something where I drop the second episode. So you'll get both very shortly. Today, we're gonna be looking at their performance look and their runway look. We will not be looking at their entrance look. If you wanna see my critique of their entrance look, you can click right over here or link in the description below because I already made that video. So for the mini challenge, the queens had to create a little bit of a girl group performance and they are coming in with their performance attire. And on the runway, the theme is signature look, a signature fragrance, where the queens had to come up with a look and a fragrance to match. But I will be judging these queen per queen, giving you both their performance look and their runway look before moving on to the next. And you can find all the timestamps below. First up, it's Gottmik. And for a performance look, Gottmik is coming out with these black gloves, these black thigh-high boots, and this a really spiked bodysuit. She is definitely leaning into her punk rock vibes and definitely giving you a moment. I think this outfit is really special. Now, when it comes to performance attires, people generally like to go with things like bodysuits or leotards or cat suits because they're really easy to move in. So this sort of makes sense until you realize it's got all of these spikes on it. And sorry, if you have spikes on your outfit, that is gonna hurt when you move, you know what I mean? So I was like, ooh, that's a choice. The thing is, is we know that Gottmik isn't that great of a dancer, so she's like, let me turn this into a fashion moment, and a fashion moment she did. As this is a fashion show, I can really appreciate it, and I love all the intricate details into it. However, if I was Gottmik, I probably would have went with something a little bit easier to move in, because you were a challenge dancer, you better give yourself all the opportunities you can to make yourself a good performer on stage. And being with a clunky outfit is probably not the way to do it. But hey, who am I to say something? She is definitely killing it on the road and I am here on YouTube talking to y'all. But back to the outfit, I think it is gorgeous. Uh, she's making spikes very much part of her personality, very much fitting into her punk rock vibes and very much gonna be a fuck. And for her runway look, Gottmik is coming out in this all black dress with this giant chain wrapped around her. She's got her signature fragrance called Crash because she is crashing the system and she decided to pair it with her signature black and white mug and a little devil horns. First up, I'm gonna say I love the branding here and I love that Gottmik is staying with her aesthetic, her vibe, her, her brand. You know, she always says, let's crash the system, and therefore her fragrance is called Crash. Also, we know that Gottmik likes to do this sort of punk rock stuff, and she did it again here, but she made it fashion because the outfit itself is really beautiful, really sophisticated, really plain, but in like a good way. But it's all about the fragrance and this giant chain. And I love, love, love this chain. I think that it is so cool. It can be used in so many different ways. And it really makes this outfit have that moment it needed because sometimes all black just doesn't read. Now her fragrance is the giant spiky ball, but what I do like about it is that she wore the spiky necklace and the spikes on her head to kind of give you this whole a vibe all together. All in all, I think this is a very good look and a very strong start. And that is why Gottmik is gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Nina West. And for her performance look, Nina West is coming out in this sort of like 
purple robotic idea. I was not expecting this from Nina West. She usually goes for a very campy vibe. So for her to give us this like chromatica thing, I was like, okay, work girl. I think this is super cool and purple is my favorite color. So I was happy to see it in the challenge. The thing is, is that they all mostly went black except for a couple of them. So I wish that this outfit was in black so it would have made them feel like a little bit more of a unit. When it comes to performance attire, they're usually using stuff that they already have in their wardrobes. They're not necessarily bringing it for this challenge. So you always have to give them a little bit of slack. What I'm surprised is that she had that with her because this is pretty good and honestly better than what I've seen her do on like her promo for example. If you want to see what I said about her on the promo, check the link below. Uh, I'll post it there. You can watch my other video. On the outfit, I think all the shapes are really interesting. It's got, it, it curves her body. It feels futuristic. It feels new. It feels modern. I feel like the only thing that's really missing is the hair. The hair is typical Nina West and she went with this giant up to. I think with a look like this, I think just like some slick back matrix style hair or a long pony would have really really brought it into a different direction. I know that's not necessarily Nina West, but she's already doing this. You might as well go full on in that direction. All in all, I think this is pretty cool and pretty special. And with a little tweaks here and there could be really amazing. And that is why she is getting a bop. And Nina West for her runway and fragrance look is giving us criminal. She decided to do this black and white striped bottle that kind of gives you the idea that she is a criminal. But the part that I really like about it is instead of just taking this criminal persona and putting it into her outfit, she decided to camp it up and actually make herself look like the bottle, which I think is so genius. We already know that Nina West is like sort of the funny queen. Uh, she's not necessarily going to be the fashion queen. So I like that she decided to lean into it and not try to become the fashion queen. And I think that this is actually a very successful attire. I was really not expecting much from Nina West on this season, but this first episode, I'm like, girl, she is turning it up. And I am really surprised. And yeah, that is a little bit shady. The look itself has got a lot of interesting shapes, a lot of interesting angles, and the black and white is extremely striking. And it definitely gives you like that criminal like jail vibe, but also gives you this like really cool pattern and show stopping moment. All in all, I think this is really well put together and that is why she's getting a bob. Next up, we have a plastic tiara. And plastic tiara for her performance attire is coming out with these black thigh high boots, this sort of like a bikini ensemble that is black and white with sort of gold detailing in. And she's paired her with this long blonde ponytail, which she is definitely using to do some hairography. Now, Plastic Tiara is serving what the kids want to see. Plastic Tiara is a gorgeous person and therefore she is showing body, adi, adi, adi. Now I will say that had this been a runway look, I probably would have been much more severe on it. But since this is a performance look, you can kind of do what you want to do on these sort of performance looks. You know, I'm going to cut her some slack. This outfit definitely feels like there was probably more to it. My guess is that this had a piece on top of it that was a reveal that then got into this sort of bathing suit sort of number because that would make more sense as a drag performer. But she probably only used this piece because it fit the girl group vibe a little bit more. Now, once you look at the bikini, you realize that there is some really intricate details into it, which makes me think that this is a reference to something. I just don't know what it is. It's definitely giving me those Sailor Moon vibes, but I know it's not Sailor Moon. So it's probably some other anime that she's kind of referencing. If you know what the anime is, let me know in the comments below. All in all, Plastic Tiara looks fantastic and therefore is gonna get a bop. And on the runway, Plastic Tiara is coming out with her fragrance, Fantastique. She decided to do this sort of gold winged moment. She walks around the corner with these like sort of wings on her and as she walks, they open up. But you notice there is not one set of wings, but two set of wings. She decided to go full mechanical with this and give you bigger and better. We've seen wings done many times on Drag Race and I'm still always surprised to be honest because they are freaking amazing. But she decided to double it up and give you two. And what I love about them is you can see that these are expensive wings because they just move also slightly when she walks. I don't know where the mechanism is on it, but girl, this is fantastic. And once the wings open, you see her beautiful body. She's giving you this sort of like bra and panty moment. She's definitely giving you 
like Victoria's Secret Angels, and I am freaking loving it. Only Plastique can pull off a look wearing absolutely nothing, but still look like a million dollars. Then she decided to pair it with her fragrance bottle, which mimics the same gold wings, but wrapped around it. You know what I love about this bottle is that if it was actually like teeny tiny, I could see it being a really cool bottle and sold in stores. I feel like people would really love it. It's giving me those J'adore Dior vibes, or maybe it's Paco Rabanne. I gotta learn my fragrances, girl. I really love this. This is perfection from head to toe and 100% gonna be a bug. Next up is Angeria Paris Van Michaels. And for her performance look, Angeria is coming out with these black and white striped buckled bodysuit with these puffy sleeves and black thigh-high boots. I think we are seeing a trend on black thigh-high boots. And she decided to pair it with this coiffed hair. Now, the one thing I will say is this performance attire a little bit confused me because I don't see Angie in this. This is a really good performance attire, but I probably see like 10 queens that have some version of this. And so it's no surprise that Angie has this one. And you know what? This does look like a better version than I've seen in the club. So I gotta give her that. What I'm missing is Angie's personality and maybe she's trying to switch it up and that's why she's giving us some of these harder edge. We saw her in her entrance look where she gave us a little bit more of that punk vibe. Here she's going with this vibe. So it is not that Southern Belle vibe that I'm used to. But that being said, the outfit is really cool. To be honest, it is a great outfit. I think a a lot of queens would want this and it looks good on her and despite not being the most original I can't really fault her for that because again you're taking something from your own wardrobe and when you are doing multiple gigs you want something that is versatile that you can dance in and this is that outfit all in all it's not my favorite but also not bad and that is why she is still gonna get a ah. And on the runway, Angeria is coming out with her fragrance, Southern Bell, and it is literally a bell. She decided to pair her fragrance with this head to toe look, which definitely has the bell shape, but she's playing more into her Southern vibes. And I think this is so genius. This is like marketing, branding 101, where she's leaning into her Southernness, which we loved on our first season, and she decided to bring it into this fragrance. I love it because it is both campy and cool, but it's actually really well made and really elegant. She definitely looks like the church lady, but like if the church lady was on a runway in New York or something like that, you know what I mean? And I think this is so genius. It's really like taking those vibes, but making it more drag. And that's what I want. I don't want things to be so literal. This is drag, this is fantasy. So let's take it up a notch and up a notch. She did. She's got the big hat. She's got the little handkerchief on her neck. She's got the tool dress, the sleeves. It's definitely giving you all of those church lady tropes, but really like va va vooming it. And on top of all, she is a selling this garment and this fragrance, which makes you just love it that much more. All in all, I think this is genius and definitely gonna be a bug. Next up, it's Miss Vanji. And for her performance look, Vanji is coming out with this multicolored bodysuit. It's got yellow, it's got orange, it's got blue, and she decided to pair it with silver boots. Now this one stands out completely out of the girl group because it literally doesn't match to the girl group. On top of it, I am struggling with this one because I do not feel that this even flatters her. You know me, I am partial to a neon, so you think that I would love this look, but honestly, it's kind of just not there for me. And that's sort of disappointing because I am missing that like edginess, that coolness that Vanji always brings. This just feels like a basic bodysuit and one that isn't particularly interesting and definitely doesn't match the others. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and just go and say it's gonna be a drab. <laughs> And for her runway look, Miss Vanjie is coming out with her own fragrance, Toxica. And Toxica is this play on this nuclear wasteland sort of look. She's decided to do the look which is a black and this sort of neon printed fabric with studs and mesh detail in it. She's paired it with this face mask and this black and yellow hair. Now, let's talk about the look. First, we have to talk about this hair. 
I love this two-tone hair with these colors in it. I know it's a really subtle detailing, but like that is so genius, so smart, and honestly, really expensive. This is the type of hair that I would love to own, and I think a lot of queens will as well. Now, I'm personally partial to larger hair because I like mine to feel a little bit more drag and less woman, and so this one is feeling a little bit flat for me, but with this texture and this pattern in it, I don't know that you can necessarily do an updo, so I totally get the vibe. So I totally get why she went in this direction. And the outfit itself is a really cool combination with this printed fabric, these studs, and this mesh, you really get all the textures and everything going on. It's really giving you this punk edge vibe. It is definitely something I would want. It's definitely something I'm probably going to use as inspiration and definitely cool. The only problem I have is, is it good enough for All Stars 9? And I'm like, I don't know. Because although it's got a cool vibe, it doesn't look va 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 boom. Like maybe you can get away with a look like this on a regular season, but on an All Star season, we are expecting a lot more. I feel like this look would be really awesome if you took it on Work the World, especially like a Halloween tour. I think that would be super cool. Or I think this look would have also looked really good had she used it as a performance attire. I just don't know if it is a runway look. Then we got to talk a little bit about the branding. Toxica. What does this have to do with Miss Vanji? Like, I never saw her as a toxic queen. I don't know what this has to do with her vibe, her look. I mean, it's cool, but I don't associate this with Miss Vanji. And I think that that's also part of the problem. Like, at the end of the day, although it's a look challenge, it's also a branding challenge, and the two have to match. And I feel like this didn't hit on all cylinders. Although I love the look, I don't think it's strong enough, and on top of it, the branding isn't working for me, but I have no choice but to give her a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Georges. And for a performance look, Georges is coming out in this like really stringy cutout bodysuit that is all in black. And she's got these black gloves with these black spikes and she's paired it with red hair. Now, I will say that Georges is that body dancer queen, so this is what you kind of expect if you go from Georges. She's gonna be showing you cutouts body all day long. We saw this with her entrance look, and then she is doing it here again. So it is feeling a little bit done, but since this is a performance look, you kind of expect it to be done because she's probably used it for another performance. You know what I mean? You can't really fault her for that. But the part that I particularly like about this specific little bodysuit, these little like arm glove things with these spikes on them really make this feel some other way, very different. And I'm kind of really digging that. Now she decided to pair it with red hair and I thought that was a little bit of an odd choice. I think this would have looked a lot better with black hair to give you a little bit more oomph. I think that once you're doing these really plain looks, you kind of have to put some hair into it to really like take it up a notch. But that's my personal choice. That being said, does Georgia's look bad? No, it doesn't. Is it on brand for her? Yes, it is. And that's why for Miss Georgia's, despite wearing very little fabric, it is definitely gonna be a bop. And Georgia's for her runway look is coming out with her fragrance, Little Chiquita. They first showed the fragrance and it looks like this little bottle of poppers. And I'm like, smart, because Georgia's always talks about smoking weed and doing some poppers. And I thought, super cute, super original. Then she turns the corner with her outfit and I'm a little bit confused. The outfit itself is this sort of a feathered half dress moment with these cutouts on the side and this black hair with these red pieces in it. The outfit itself looks super cool, but I'm just like, what do these two have to do with each other? When I saw the fragrance, I thought that the outfit was gonna be a bunch of like little bottles, a little sniffer bottles, you know what I mean? Maybe giving you that sort of a rave vibe, but I was definitely not expecting a gown. I feel like the only thing holding these two together is the color red. Like, what am I missing here? As she gets to the end of the runway, she pulls off the feather piece to reveal this full bodysuit, and again, it didn't make it better for me. I mean, the outfit is cool, but I still didn't get the concept. And this is where I'm like, ooh, what do I do? Can I fab it? Can I drab it? Because the outfit is really well made. The feathers look expensive. The bodysuit is stone to the god. So all the things that I keep saying you need to do, she has done. 
The only thing that I feel like is missing is the branding. And this is where I'm just like, should this have been an actual challenge and just not a runway theme? Because it definitely feels more like a challenge. You know what I mean? All that being said, Georgia's looks gorgeous. The one thing that I will say that is that I, in my professional life, am a, a graphic designer, art director, creative director in the branding space. So I am extra critical of people's branding. And because I am extra critical of the branding and this one does not hit the branding, despite being a beautiful gown, I'm going to go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Chanel. And for her performance look, Chanel is coming out with this like orange bodysuit with the biggest shoulders and all of these like sort of gold chains onto it and gold little detailing it. She's paired it with the biggest hair that is blown out and she is definitely giving you her signature over the top everything on it Vegas vibes. I will say that this is a very Chanel look. This is the type of drag she does. Once you do this style of drag, sometimes you got to look at it and take like one thing off, which honestly this time I think it's kind of okay in the amount of stuff that's on it. The problem I have with it is that it just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with any of the other queens. It doesn't fit color wise, shape wise, it just, it just doesn't fit. So she sticks out in this group and I know they're working with stuff what they had, but I think had this been all in black, it would have gone a lot further. I feel like had this been in black, she could have got away with having this exact outfit because then it would have matched a little bit better. But if she was going to be doing it in this bright color, then she needed something a lot simpler to like just go with these basic bodysuits that most of these queens are given. All in all, had this not been a girl group, I probably would have fabbed it, but in this lineup, it just sticks out in all the wrong ways, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> And on the runway, Chanel is coming out with her fragrance, Chanel Number no. 1. Now, obviously, if you guys didn't get it, this is a play on Chanel Number no. 5, a very famous perfume by Coco Chanel, but she decided to use it in her own spelling and use her own name. And she used the number 1 because she was on the first season of Drag Race. And I'm like, girl, intelligent. I love it. Now, the fragrance bottle itself is all red with these spike and details on it. And then you look at her gown and she's mimicked those looks. She's got the pointed shoulders and all of the lining inside has got the sequins to match the sequins from the bottle. On top of it, she's got like this traditional gown in this mermaid style, which we've seen Chanel do quite a lot and this updo. Now I will say Chanel is a drag queen and I love it. And I say this because Chanel does a lot, but I like a lot. She is not running away from her dragoness. She knows that she's not gonna be a runway queen, but it doesn't mean that she can't be a good drag queen. And that's the thing, drag has so many different forms and she's maybe going a little bit more old school with it, but like, if it's good, it's good. And this is good. And that is why for Chanel, I am gonna go ahead and give her a ah! And last, but definitely not least, it's Miss Roxy Andrews. And for her performance attire, Roxy Andrews is coming out with this black bodysuit with these mesh sort of detailing, in, really curving her body. Now, the thing about this bodysuit is I know this is a Mugler bodysuit. So I know she spent a lot of money on this look. The problem I have is there are so many knockoffs of this look and every drag queen basically owns one of the knockoffs. So I've seen this look a million times, maybe not the original, but I have seen it done. And that's sort of the problem. For me, it doesn't feel special, even though she's wearing the original one. So I think to the average viewer who is not a drag queen, who is not in the clubs every week, you'll probably think this is pretty cool. And to me, it is not. I actually was thinking of buying the knockoff version, but then I decided not to because I've seen too many people wearing it and then it annoyed me too. So on one hand, I wanna give her kudos because it's a cool look, but on the other hand, I've seen it done, so I'm not really that inspired. But the one thing I will say that is that this fits Roxy's vibe, which is this like fashion girl and this body girl. So for that, I gotta give her her kudos. And that is why, despite not being my favorite, I'm gonna go ahead and do a soft bow. And for Roxy Andrews Runway, she's coming out with her signature scent, never sent home. First, let's talk about the name. I love this name. I think it is so smart because she was never sent home on two seasons and she's kind of become synonymous for this, but I also like that she has the word sent in it because it is a double entendre and plays on that. She decided to make this bottle all blue encrusted with diamonds. And I think that's really smart because we know her as a pageant queen. So when she turns the corner, I'm like, 
ooh, that was slightly disappointed because I was expecting a sort of pageant gown, a, a little bit more of a moment. She decided to go with this baby blue dress that is flowing with just the littlest amount of rhinestones. And I say that littlest amount, you know, relative. She decided to pair this with blonde hair that is probably human hair because it is feeling very flat. And I don't know about you, but isn't this giving you a lot of Elsa vibes? And I'm like, mmm. I don't know. Actually, I do know. I do know that this is not the way it should be going. Roxy is a superstar and we know she can do so much better. I feel like she got a little bit lost and just gave us a pretty dress and that is just not enough for an all-star season. And she should know this. She's been on an all-star season before. If I was Roxy Andrews, I probably would have went in a completely different look. I probably would have played on the thick and juicy because she said that on her show. She also was that in the lip sync uh, assassin. So I really feel like she could have taken that on. And I think it would have made a little bit of a cooler look. This is feeling, like I said, just a pretty dress. And just a pretty dress isn't enough. And that is why she is gonna get a drab. And with only eight queens this season, that is it. Now, I will say that this was an interesting week. I will say that the runway felt like almost like a full challenge that they got to do at home, which I thought was an interesting take. And the girl group was... Well, the girl group, really. I don't know if this was my favorite first episode. Usually with the first episode, I wanted to start with a little bit of a bang. And this one was more of a eh, fizzle. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and let me know if you thought this was a strong episode. Well, enough about that. Let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So my drab of the week this week for the girl group look is Miss Aww. Van G. And my drop of the week this week for the runway look is oh. Roxy Andrews. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. So who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week for the girl group goes to Got Mick. And for the runway look, my fab of the week goes to Plastic Tiara. Okay, y'all, do you agree or disagree with my thoughts, comments, even my fabs and drabs of the week? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye-bye.